You're listening to another ambitious entrepreneur network.com podcast, the voice for entrepreneurs and small business. Now onto the show. Welcome to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, daily conversations with Christian entrepreneurs to inspire and empower Christian business owners to walk strongly in their faith while build a thriving business that honors him in every way. Now over to your host, and Marie Cross. And welcome to another episode of the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is episode 143, and I'm your host, Anne Marie Cross, the podcasting queen. My guest today says, When it's God's will, there is a way. And joining me on today's show is Kristen Kurtz. Kristen is a wife of 16 years and a mother of two boys. And by God's grace, she was saved from a destructive life of reckless living. Kristen is living a life for Christ, keeping her eyes on him and in him and navigating an unequally yoked marriage. Now, Kristen works full time at a health insurance company by day and is also a Christian life coach and the CEO of New Wings Coaching, as well as a wellness nutrition advocate and business owner. Now on today's show, Kristen's going to share, start every morning in the Bible before encountering the world. So important. She's also going to talk about let go of control. He has the future mapped out. And when we try to interfere or do things our way rather than his, things don't go well. And she's also going to talk about we don't need to fight, we don't need to strive, nor do we need to grind in business. The world would have us think that we need to put business before everything. However, as a Christian entrepreneur, it's quite the opposite. God first before all of things. Make him the CEO of your business. Welcome to the show, Kristen. Thank you for having me. (laughs) It's very Um, exciting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is such an important topic uh, to talk about today. And I think as, you know, Christian entrepreneurs, we can often see what uh, other coaches, what other consultants, mentors are are sharing, you know, hustle, hustle, grind, grind, grind. Mm -hmm. But as Christian entrepreneurs, we know that that is not the way that we have been called. And I tell you what, it can be exhausting for Mm -hmm. sure. God knows Mm -hmm. better need to to put him first. So thank you for for sharing that uh, topic. Starting with the Bible in the morning before encountering the world. Why is this so important? Well, mostly for me personally, um, living in an unequally yoked marriage, um, I need to step into, you know, my own house here being filled up with him first because it, it can be tough. Um, if anybody has, um, you know, the same challenge that I do in their marriage with, with that unequally yoked, um, having him first, I mean, he's, he's my number one partner in crime, so to say. Um, and if I have him, if he's flowing through me, what comes out of me is more likely to be love, patience, kindness, you know, the fruits of the spirit. And, you know, for many years, I've been a believer for you know, 15 years. And I would just kind of get right into my day because I work full time, I have a business, I have kids and um, just trying to hustle, 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 get, go, go. And then it's like, well, I didn't fit him in. And I learned a very um, great lesson years ago. Um, I can't remember who, who spoke it, but um, give him your morning before you give anybody else your morning. Mm -hmm. So so. That's been huge. I mean, it, it's a shift for mm-hmm. sure. Um, share with us a little bit, if you would, uh, how you decided to open your Christian uh, life coaching business. Was it something that you saw was a need or, or how did that pan out for you? Well, God is just so good at just shifting things. I actually was part of a direct sales business as a health coach and through that he kind of pointed me in a new direction and I actually was uh, introduced to I don't know if I can mention the school but I I speak highly of it Um, 
It's called Christian Coach Institute. And Janice Lavore Fletcher, I, I actually watched her video. And I, I believe in my, um, my notes here, I, I mentioned that butterflies are my god winks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they usually are a clear sign. It's kind of that confirmation for me, like, oh, yeah, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Well, I watched Janice's video in, at the end when she was mentioning, like, hey, you know, get started. I saw in the back behind her, there was a painting of a butterfly. And I was like, okay, go up. This is where you want me to go, Lord. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so I actually started that last um, January and graduated in May. And then my dad had passed away about a week after. So I kind of shifted again and um, actually was certified just, just in March. So um, I've done coaching for about five years, but as far as the actual certification goes it's only been a couple months fantastic so. exciting mm -hmm. i think you know when we look at what's going out uh, around in the world and the messages that we're constantly bombarding when we said it's so important to start our morning off every morning in the bible i know for me it's important because i can otherwise just get so cluttered um mm -hmm. and in my own you know this is what we need to do and and just mind that we forget mm -hmm. you know what a lot of the hustling and grinding mm -hmm. he's got already under mm -hmm. control doors can open that we could not possibly work many hours yeah. to, to then have open and i think going back to around the life coaching there are so many people that are struggling trying to balance everything whereas mm -hmm. really what you, we need to do is rather than try and manage to balance everything on our own is to dive into the word because there we are promised perfect peace in him and as we know Jesus mm -hmm. is the perfect peace share yeah. a little bit more about the decision making that you get was it just an intention that you thought you know what I'm going to start doing this because for some people even carving out five minutes or 10 minutes is going to require a completely different mm -hmm. shift if you will around mindset around and practical intention and doing it how did that mm -hmm. show up for you well, I, I knew that putting him first above all was the key. Yeah. So if that meant putting him above all in everything, mm -hmm. that meant I need to put him above all before anything, before I even start my day. Yeah. Um, and, and for me personally, you know, some people get up really early in the morning. They wake up at five in the morning and, and sit for hours. For me, um, I don't make it a uh, time bound. I don't, I don't make it, it doesn't have to be the same every day. Um, and honestly, the U version Bible app mm -hmm. is what I go to. I'm, um, I dive into different Bible studies. And then I also do the one year Bible as well. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the day, I'm just kind of digging in a little bit, kind of getting little bites as I'm going throughout my day at work too, because that's kind of where the enemy comes in the most mm -hmm. <laughs> is at work. So, yeah. yeah, it's great. I love that. I've got an app, um, Jesus Calling. I love that. Oh, yeah. It has a little message uh, and then the, the Bible verses. And then, of course, there's Proverbs 31. They've got an app, verse mm -hmm. 5, uh, and so many resources that just even a verse, I find, um, can really set you up and, and it's a reminder and it allows because and, and in fact uh, in Jesus calling today it said I already have this plan this day planned out mm. mapped out for you I want to walk alongside you you know give me yeah. your fears your <laughs> troubles even thank me for the challenges which can be really difficult to say Lord thank you for that challenge but you know mm -hmm. I think we've said it before in in this show is that it's often in those challenges and the obstacles we face when we allow God in to support us. And it says we're, we're promised that our weaknesses will become strong through him. He can shape our character and build in us that resilience that mm -hmm. allows us to no matter what's going on, um, mm -hmm. you know, handle the day. And I'm reminded of that verse in, in uh, Psalm 23, uh, you know, right at the end, it, it says, you know, that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow with death, I fear no evil for you are with mm -hmm. me. And and I think that was when David wrote, he was in that cave, wasn't he? And he, his life was threatened. And I think we all can walk through dark, deep valleys where oh, things yes. can seem, you know, really unmanageable and unhandable if you, if you want from a human perspective, but we know mm -hmm. that he has it all, all yes. planned out 
how can we be yes. reminded of those promises if, as you mm. say, we don't spend time reminding ourselves of those promises in the world, mm. uh, in the in the word? Do you have a favorite verse that you often remind yourself of? I do. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. And I was actually led to read beyond that um, recently, and I don't have that memorized, so I apologize. But to go from Jeremiah 29, 11 to Jeremiah 29, 14, yeah. um, it, it opened up another chapter so to say for me when I looked at that entire 11 through 14 um so if you guys want to turn to that later on I'm, I'm not gonna I don't remember it right now I'm sorry <laughs> you know that um um Jeremiah 29 11 is one that uh, often will uh, be one you know a verse that that really inspires uh people and mm -hmm. you know what I think as as a reminder, I mean, as Christians, we so often will get in our minds and start to worry. And that's what the enemy does. It starts off mm -hmm. with a little worry and then it gets more and more to the point where we really are um, sitting in this feeling of anxiousness. When we yeah. know that, you know, no matter what, God knows the plans he has for us. He's knitted us to get, you know, while we were in mm -hmm. our mother's womb. So he knows us intimately. Why do we worry or mm -hmm. allow worry to, to really get us? down mm. and uh, it's such a great reminder to turn to the world because the answers are, are, are there now something else mm -hmm. that can be really difficult to do and i love your your insights on this Kristen, is letting go of control this fits in beautifully what are yes. some things that you've learned along the way <laughs> maybe there's some verses that you found really helped strengthen yeah. in this and in letting go of control well last year god completely shifted me um, as I mentioned, I was in a direct sales company um, as a health coach, and I thought I was going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. And he was like, honey, I've got something else for you, and, and you need to do something with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kept wanting to control the situation. No, God, this is, this is what I want to do. This is where you have me. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep hustling and I'm going to keep grinding and I'm going to keep striving. And um, I didn't let him have full control over it all. It was more of a situation of, God, this is what I want to do. And then I would pray about it. Mm. Bless this, please. Rather than letting him give me the answers, say, Lord, you know, what, what do you want me to do in this business? Yeah. Um, and at that time, um, I really had to surrender. And I just said, Lord, okay, that this is yours. Mm -hmm. And the verse that kept coming up um, after that was Isaiah 43, 19. Mm -hmm. And that one is, um, I have my note here. Um, see, I'm, I am doing something new. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Mm. And it kept coming up over and over and over in this time where I said, Lord, I need it to be very clear. I need you to give me a very clear sign again. <laughs> Cause I get very demanding. Oh, I need it, Lord. Come down Just and give it to me. <laughs> um, and it, it needed to be audible almost. Mm. It needed to be very visual. I'm a very, audible visual person and he just kept showing this verse over and over and over mm -hmm. so that that did shift me and it it led me again back to really focusing on on this life coaching and um and also uh the verse that he's really given me uh over and over recently is psalm forty six ten: be still and know that i am god mm -hmm. and then i was in prayer one time and it was I heard him almost say, and you are not <laughs> be still and know that I am God and that you are not. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, you get like that two by four. It's like, hello. Okay. I, I understand. <laughs> so I, I, I call it kind of an unwinding process. Um, I, I come from a very um, unstable place, a lot of moving. Um, so ever since I, I got to be an adult, we have fireworks going off out here <laughs> yay <laughs> um thanks lord <laughs> um you know, <laughs> yeah, thank you lord for the fireworks 
So, um, you know, just, just wanting to have control um, was really something as an adult that I wanted to have. And it, I, I just keep finding every year, I'm just, Lord, just, just do what you will with me. And um, his word for me is uh, this year, I, I'd always said, had these fighting words, like, I'm a warrior, I'm a, I'm a conqueror, and I'm going to fight. And I said, Lord, give me a word this year. And it, it was kept. And it, it didn't make sense at first, but um, it's really, after I prayed about it a lot, and he just revealed to me that I don't need to fight anymore, that I'm already held, he already has it, and I don't need to control things. <laughs> Yeah. So I call it the unwinding process, mm-hmm. um, almost like a yo-yo. I kind of, you know, come down and I'm okay, not having the control. Then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, whoa, <laughs> I need to control again. And yeah. he's like, honey, I got you. It's fine. <laughs> so Isn't that's kind of how it works. Yeah, beautiful. Interesting that the lesson we most need to learn, and this is different for everybody, often stems from things that were nurtured, uh, things we heard, learned and saw, you know, and experienced, if you will, as a child and how often God will, it's like praying for patience. Well, we will have instances (laughs) when we need to wait and wait and wait. And it's kind of like, Lord, you could just go and I would be, but that's not really how he operates. And so you, you know, around the aspect of control, that is where you really need to, you know, and he's encouraged you through various circumstances and situations mm-hmm. in your life. And I'm sure people who are listening and watching today that there may certainly be other people who can relate to, to that. I wonder mm-hmm. then looking back, and th- th- these are life lessons we continue to learn, I'm, I'm sure, yes. because there are also elements of strength where we are mm-hmm. able to look into action. We know what plans and, and things. Those are being knitted together in you, obviously, too, that you can mm-hmm. do that. So looking back then, what are some of the deepest or the greatest insights that you've learned? Maybe it's just re-emphasizing what you said today, and I'd love you to share that because I know that this is going to be so helpful for others who are struggling with the releasing of control and handing it over to him. What are some of the greatest insights you've learned? Yeah, I mean, honestly, there have been a lot of hills and valleys. And I don't know if you guys have heard the song, um, any of the other listeners too, the Ter- I think it's Taryn Wells, I believe is his name. There's a song called Hills and Valleys. And when that came out, it just was really great because um, I've often you know, when I'm in a valley, um, last year was a a pretty deep valley after the loss of a parent and not knowing how to navigate that. Um, Just knowing that there was going to be a mountaintop coming um, and knowing and kind of looking back and seeing his hand over those prior valleys. And you don't want to stew in the valleys from the past too long, but just to see where his hand, like he said, held, (laughs) kept kept me up in a float like he was almost that life preserver that I didn't know I had even before becoming a believer Mm -hmm. um so just kind of looking at those moments that we've had for for just you know that that period of time even to journal Mm -hmm. and just kind of ask him like what what is going on here how how can I you know Mm -hmm. best turn to you in this storm um Yeah. yeah so (laughs) it's such a great reminder and I think you know that is the times specifically and particularly where we have to go to the word and Mm -hmm. find those bible verses that Mm -hmm. mean that have meaning to us and again it's going to be different for everyone God's going to speak to us differently and how he knows that we need to be supported but that's Mm -hmm. so important because I think what the enemy will often do and I've heard this from other people that have come on the show as well and maybe you because Kristen have found this that what the enemy tries to do is have us think that we are alone that no Mm. one else really understand and that um, it's going to be so long before we get to the or we are alone in the the getting out of that valley to to the you know to the peak to the mountaintop is that Mm. something that you found too if you look back to to when you were really in the in the valley oh yes um it's that waiting right um, for even 
the salvation of my husband. You know, it's been, we've been married, we've been together for 22 years and uh, married 16. Um, and, and just in, it can be a valley almost every day if I were to look at it from that perspective, because we are very different. But um, to just continue, like for me, worship music is is huge. Um, I turn to to worship when um, I want to wallow, because <laughs> sometimes we just want to wallow, and it's it's you can almost be triggered. And when the enemy knows, the enemy knows us so well too. God knows everything about us, but the enemy knows what our weaknesses are, and um, can kind of come in and, and even drop you down a few notches further in your, you know, sadness or the anxiety or the worry about your future. Um, so, yeah, so, so mm -hmm. true. You know, even in the situations, if I look back to the valleys that I have been in and there, are, you know, of which there are many, even in that midst of sadness, despair, and when you are on your knees, you know, and you're just cry crying, um, mm -hmm. It's in that, that even though I know that I need to go through that physically, because your body needs to release that tension and that stress at the mm -hmm. back of my mind, I'm always thinking, but I know that you've got me and I will get yes. through this because yes. you've already destined it. So, mm -hmm. and in that there is always hope. And that's, that's the other thing that I want to, to share. It's so important. The enemy takes away that hope and it's so mm -hmm. important. Because no matter what we are struggling with, there is always hope. There are people yes. there that are um, that want to support you. And I think that's so important to, to realize that no matter what we're going through, there's always mm -hmm. a way through, around, under. Yes. Always yes. And um, yeah. Bible verses can be that. Because as we know that, you know, um, resist the devil and he will flee. So yes. worship. Like, See ya, bye. It's bye, devil. I'm done with you. <laughs> It, am I going to use as my weapon today? Yes. So I'm a warrior, yes. Right? And uh, yes. so the, uh, this is such a, a great reminder. So letting go of yes. he has our map. Yes. You're already mapped out. Mm -hmm. now yes, my cool. friend um, Michelle, actually, after my dad had passed away, when you mentioned hope, I just wanted to mention a book, if you don't mind. Um, it's called Hope Prevails, um, A Doctor's Journey Through Depression. Um, I might be quoting like the, the subtitle incorrectly, but her name is um, Dr. Michelle Bankston. Mm -hmm. And that book um, really helped me through that deep valley like of despair after the death of my father. And it helped my mom as well. Mm -hmm. So if anybody is really struggling, um, you know, we, we saw a couple, you know, high profile celebrities last week that mm -hmm. um, they, they didn't have the hope and it it's a I don't know I just don't even I can't even expound on it but um that book really yes and I found helped it a lot I think yeah I thought I'll look it up hope yes inside yes doctor's personal journey through yes. uh, depression and yes. uh, oh absolutely you know I think in instances yeah my, Michelle Benson's about B yes E T S O N. So mm -hmm. certainly that was a great resource. Yes. Sure it would be a great resource for others. And I think here's the thing often we go through life and we try and put masks on, even mm -hmm. in churches. And to me, yeah. it's like if we're having a bad day, express it to someone. We all go through things at mm -hmm. various, as we said, um, yeah. in valleys and mountains. And the journey that we've walked, such as you've just said, you found this mm -hmm. book really helpful. Now imagine if someone reached out to you and said, you know what, I'm really feeling um, that things are getting hopeless. If you mm -hmm. don't know that, that someone hasn't expressed it, you're not then able to support them. And yeah. And I think sometimes, you know, as Christians too, we, we are told to be compassionate and we want to be, but sometimes mm -hmm. we need to be mindful as, am I looking after myself? Am I giving myself the compassion? Am yes. I, you, you know, or am I sometimes stretching myself too, too thin? There's an mm -hmm. archetype that I use and archetypes are just various characteristics or sets of characteristics of people. And there's a nurturing characteristics and these people want to be um, helpful and supportive for others and compassionate for others and they are that's their gift mm -hmm. but like with any strength and gift we can overplay that and with a nurturer they put themselves last you know and others first all oh, I know. yet 
at the same token, how can we put ourselves, our needs to ensure that we're continuously filling ourselves up and what mm-hmm. you said, filling ourselves up with the truth, yes. the Bible, filling yes. ourselves up by taking time out or to recoup or refresh, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. So yeah. important because sometimes yeah. if we're not looking after ourselves, how can we expect to be able mm-hmm. to support love and show compassion to others when we yes. are um, really exhausted? And that's similar to the fighting, striving and grinding. We do need time out to refresh yeah. Right, don't we? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! I that it actually. Um, so I, I just have I'm a basket of resources here, but yeah, the, the gal the gal who actually uh, one of my mentors, uh, Shea Bynes, S H A E Bynes B Y N E S. Yes, <laughs> she wrote a book called Grace Over Grind, and um, it really kind of flipped my my whole thinking around. Um, that his grace will, will carry us through rather than our grind. Um, so that's a great resource for us Christian, you know, business owners to, to just step back. Um, it's really not about us anyways. (laughs) Um, I, I just, the shifting that's happened in this last year, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, I think, you know, part of it was my dad worked really hard. He had his own business, a uh, third generation printer, graphic artist. And, you know, one of the last things he said to me was, don't work so hard that you end up like this. Um, he was only 70 and his body, you know, shut down from the grind. And um, part of my coaching is to help women rest, mm. honestly. Like that's Which just, I, I want you to rest. Don't we? I won't say it's backwards. It is. Someone to called me today and said, I need to tell someone because otherwise I feel guilty or didn't, I don't think yeah. it's the word. Uh, I need to take a nap. And I, I, I texted back, take that nap because that is just as important for you to rest your yeah. body. Sometimes yeah. a 20 minute nap or whatever, if you're feeling tired, um, yeah. do the world of good. And I think, you know, when we're in a society that tells us that or has us feeling that having a rest or a break and feeling guilty or shame around that, there's actually no guilt or shame. Mm. You know, God made the world and then he rested for a day. Yes, amen. Creation, <laughs> it's kind of like we need to. But you know what? In that rest, I don't know about you, I find that there's various things that happen, there's various thoughts and things that I put together so if we don't give ourselves rest, the creativity, we're not feeding into that, but more mm-hmm. importantly, we often miss the little signs uh, yes. and the ability to be grateful for the sunshine, for the flowers, yes. and the birds. And I think yes. there's so much in that gratitude that, again, feeds us our yes. spirit um, as well. And if we're too busy grinding and mm-hmm. hustling, yeah. Yeah. How can we enjoy enjoy the fruits of our labor and just the beautiful yeah. things that uh, that are there? We need to go often you know, mm-hmm. and, and look for them, but they are yeah. there. We just need to be mindful. Yeah. Of. I mean, so many people are saving up their, you know, let's just say, for example, they have two weeks of vacation and they're grinding, 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 and then they maybe take two weeks off. Yeah. But I believe we can have vacation almost every day. I go on a walk often mm-hmm. in nature on my lunch break and I see butterflies, I see trees and I just stare at them and he speaks to me because I stop mm-hmm. because I am still, yeah. um, I, it, it's, it's different than how I operated previously. And I know that if you don't stop and just be still, mm-hmm. that you're not going to hear from him as much. We can read our Bible and we can listen to worship music, but if we don't take that time to intentionally rest, mm. it's almost like the radio wave is just shut down. Yeah, for sure. Um, here in Australia, we have a, quite a few more what we call public holidays, days of rest, and we just celebrated one actually yesterday, oh. here, uh, Monday. It was for the Queen's birthday weekend so my husband and I went camping and it was to a free spot we took our caravan and just a, a, you know next to a river 
and hardly anyone else was around. But just even though it's winter here, so there's no leaves on the trees or anything like that and all the autumn, you know, the yeah. four colours, it was so nice just to sit and rest. And I caught mm -hmm. up with reading we had some worship music um yeah. in the background that we listened to and it was just so um you know that to me feed, I know feeds my soul because out in the bush out amongst trees nature yeah. I don't do that I can find that uh I can start to feel quite weary it's important yeah. you have to yes, uh, yes. schedule yeah. even if it is 10 minutes or a walk because mm -hmm. um Otherwise, we find that, uh, yeah, things can, can build up um, yeah. if we're not yeah. doing that. It's just just opens up your world. <laughs> oh, it does. It does. And let's, as we were just talking about it this morning, actually, um, on, on certain days of the week, I, I go uh, with, to a personal trainer and we were talking that, you know, resilience, when we're talking about resilience and bouncing back, even in times of difficulty, I think one of the key things is ensuring that we are physically and emotionally, mentally, you know, spiritually, all important, but physically able to do that. And if we're not yeah. taking time away, how can we expect our bodies to do what it what it does best without yes. hormones and everything? But if we're so tired and drained, um, mm -hmm. our bodies can't do that. And so often, right. yeah, we can find that it's just unfortunately a yes. spot down so very important yeah. start every morning in the word before you yes. the world let go yes. that can be that is a process it's been a process for me yet yes um it is so important once you realize something in that and i'll, I'll just share quickly when we find yeah. that i found when i let go of control and allow him to take over my will he does give you the desires of your heart because he mm -hmm. knows exactly what it is that you enjoy doing and, you know, your strengths and your gifts and your talents. He's just waiting for us to put him first so that yeah. he can support us in getting out there. So that whole letting go of control, do it, because that means the yes. quicker that everything yes. is fine and <laughs> continue to do your mission then that he's got yes. down for you. He just wants to, to yeah. um, you know, have him be first because you'll need his strength. As you oh yes work. And, and it expedites the process because otherwise I, I think that um you know if we let him take the wheel mm. and he puts it in cruise control and we just kind of sit back like different things come in that you didn't even know that he wanted you to do and you're like oh well I, I think that's another I'm actually going through this right now I I went on a nature walk last week and I said, Lord, I need a very clear sign today that this is the next step. And I had a man come up to me at the nature place that I go walking at. And he said, I said, God, I need a butterfly to, to give me a clear sign. I can't share much about it quite yet, but it's another layer of what he, how he wants me to serve women. And um, a man walks up and says, Hey, do you think it's okay if I park my bus here? And I thought, well, I, I don't work here, but I don't see why not. And I look at the bus and it says Monarch Bus Company. And I said, God, you're giving me a bus? <laughs> I want to see a butterfly. Like I got a little like, but I don't want a bus. I want a butterfly. <laughs> so I walked a little bit further down the trail and a monarch was in a bush and it was fluttering around I thought okay Lord thank you like it's it's again it goes back to that loss of control and just a very clear sign um when we let him take over he'll give you a bus and a butterfly <laughs> so yeah so if someone's listening or watching today Kristen and they can really sense that uh you know some of the things that you spoke about today they would love some support what's the best yeah. way that they can connect with you Well I am on Facebook um I have a business page called New Wings Coaching and I also have a website it's uh, www.newwingscoaching.net and the net was intentional because God wants me to be fishers of men. So actually women. I, I work with women. Butterflies as you are. Yes. Them, yes. You need, you know. Yes. And, and now that we know your story about how you just love butterflies, we can yes. see how the new wings coaching certainly mm -hmm. played. Oh, and will yes. continue to play a part. 
uh, mm-hmm. in your business as you're supporting those uh, women. So thank you. Yes. Kristen, one of the things that I'm doing for all of my guests is to, just to say a word of prayer as we finish up the show. May I do that for you today? Oh, I would, I would love it. Thank you. <laughs> Father God, thank you for the opportunity that we've had today to speak to Kristen and just reinforcing the importance of starting our day with you with having some key verses from your word that really support us if we're going through various valleys that uh, Mm -hmm. we're reminded that you have our path already planned father if there's someone that's listening or watching today that really has been stuck in in a valley in a season in their life where there are struggles um, we just pray that today's Um, testimony the story that Kristen shared and the resources will really help them through father we are reminded that no matter what situation the struggles when the world tell up tells us that their things are hopeless father there is always hope there is always Mm -hmm. hope and possibility in and through you father we just want to uphold Kristen in our prayers and our thoughts continue to bless her business as she's working with women who themselves may be going through seasons of change through Mm -hmm. through seasons of challenge that they will reach out and get supported and uh, through the work that Kristen Mm -hmm. is doing and we ask this in the precious name of Jesus amen Amen. thank you coming on the show and sharing those awesome resources I know it's so important for anyone who's listening that there is always hope reach out share um, you know share what's going on so that you can talk it through and get the right support and resources in your life that will help you uh, yeah that will help you you know through one step at a time so thank you so much on the show God bless you God bless all your work too (laughs) All right. You've been listening to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, brought to you by BeTheDifferenceMovement.com, changing the world one message at a time. Do you feel called to influence real change with your message? Join our supportive community of like-minded influencers, thought leaders, and disruptors at www.BeTheDifferenceMovement.com. That's BeTheDifferenceMovement.com. Thank you.